Welcome to Education Today. I'm Austin Toy from Catanning High School in the Armstrong School District. It's no secret that Armstrong County has an energetic and motivated group of organizations who are working hard to fight childhood obesity. One of these groups is called Healthy Armstrong, which stands for Healthy Eating and Active Lifestyles, Together Helping Youth. Healthy Armstrong hosts a series of events that help keep Armstrong County safe and healthy, and many of those are held for the public as well as different initiatives that take place in our district schools. We do go over this information every year, but every year brings new faces and students to our communities, and this is a very important topic to continually cover. Tonight, we have two very influential people in our community who are leading the way in this way very important topic. With us tonight, we have Kay Owen and Devin Lorgan. Welcome to Education Today. Thank you. Uh, would you please introduce yourselves and your roles with Healthy Armstrong? Okay, my name is Kay Owen, and I am the project director for Healthy Armstrong. Mm -hmm. So you probably have a lot of responsibilities with it. Right, I um, am in charge mainly of the administration of mm -hmm. the program, and doing things like, the boring things like budgets and, mm. uh, and uh, some of the website stuff. Devin, on the other hand, gets to actually work with the kids and do all the fun stuff. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, I'm Devin Lorigan, and I'm the health and wellness coordinator <coughs> in the Armstrong School District. And we, I get to work with the kids and the different teachers and facilitators mm -hmm. at all of the school buildings. Very nice. Uh, what is the basic mission and purpose of Healthy Armstrong, and why is it a crucial organization for the time in which we live? Well, the uh, in the year 2005, one of the local pediatricians noticed that there were a number of uh, children coming through his office that had what would typically be adult diseases or adult conditions. Mm -hmm. So young children were coming with high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and diabetes. So he became very concerned about, about this. So he met with some other um, key organizations in the community like the Armstrong Hospital and Armstrong School District and together then they uh, joined and helped start Healthy Armstrong mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of those conditions were related to the fact that children were um, either overweight or obese. Now about that same time, we, the school district, all school districts in Pennsylvania were required to do uh, body mass index uh, measurements on a yearly basis. And a significant number of uh, kids in the district were either overweight or obese, like about 35%. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> and that's a little bit higher than the Pennsylvania average and, and also the national average. So that was what sounded the alarm bell back in 2005. I see. Um, now this is a question for both of you. Could you speak about where Healthy Armstrong got its start and where it's heading now? Well, I just told a little bit about the, the history, but I'll add to that. Mm -hmm. um, it, those three main organizations that I mentioned, the Armstrong School District, the Children's Pediatric Group, the hospital, uh, were key in, in uh, the, the initial uh, start. And then along the way, um, the County of Armstrong and UPMC Health Plan, you know, joined the initiative. And then since then, any organization in the county who cares about kids and wellness uh, has become part of our initiative. So we have groups like the 4-H and the YMCA and the Rails to Trails, the Department of Health. Did I miss any? You get, you get the idea. Yeah. yeah. And back in 2005, we started a pilot project in the schools in Elderton Elementary School. And that's where the, um, the actual programming began within the schools, so that continued to grow throughout all of the other schools in the district. <laughs> Any plans for the future, maybe? Oh, we have lots of plans. <laughs> oh, that's always good to hear. <laughs> if you would, you would ask about what our um, mission was or what our uh, vision, we basically have two goals. One is to help um, kids and families maintain a healthy weight, and, um, and overall that will improve their uh, health and also to um, provide education to them so they make better and healthier food choices. That's a very admirable goal. Uh, in a later episode, we will be discussing the food and nutrition program here at our district, but what are the highlights of the outcomes 
and the increased activity in food and fresh vegetable consumption in Armstrong School District. Do you want to take that first? Okay, well the fresh fruit and vegetable consumption has, uh, has gone up. We've, we've been graphing it since I think 2008. It wasn't right away at 2005, <coughs> or maybe they went back. But anyway, it, nonetheless, every year the students seem to be consuming more healthy items and less things from the unhealthy choices, which are um, like snacks and stuff that they sell separately. So that's, so that's one measure. And uh, what they also did, and um, this is, I think, pretty significant, is they looked at school lunches and they categorized the food into three different categories. Go foods, which are healthy foods, slow foods, which are foods that, you sh that are in between, you know, and you mm. should eat on occasion. And then there's woe foods that you really shouldn't eat a lot. And so they divided all the foods from the, from the me uh, meals into those categories, and then they looked at them across the years. And the number of go foods, or the mm -hmm. good healthy mm -hmm. foods that are being consumed has risen, and the number of woe foods, or the junkier food, <laughs> has decreased. So that is uh, a, a great milestone for the district and for the food service department, mm -hmm. who does a fabulous job working with us. So it's definitely a go on the go foods. Right. <laughs> now, of course, we want to highlight some of the things that the schools are doing. What's going on in the schools with regard to wellness? Oh, there's lots of stuff going on. I'll start in the elementary schools. Um, everybody has an after-school wellness program with the kids and the families where they try to engage them in physical activities as well as nutrition education to help in uh, healthier decision making. Uh, we do things during the school day. They have like in-school walk programs where we try to collect uh, as many minutes that the kids can be active outside of physical education class. They uh, en engage in activities such as the apple crunch, which is a Pennsylvania kind of like holiday for wellness. And that's coming up here at the end of October. We do things like the jump rope for heart and uh, different activities like that. And in the secondary schools, they have morning walk programs, morning exercise programs, after school exercise programs. There's a lot going on, a lot that the kids can take advantage of um, and get fitter lifestyles. It's very good that there's a lot of options for the kids. Mm -hmm. Well, we realize that not all the kids enjoy the same types of activities. Mm -hmm. So we try to make all sorts of different things available. We promote 5Ks in the community. We uh, have community activities, like we just held a healthy lifestyle extravaganza at Lenape Tech, where the kids from the district were able to come and engage in all sorts of different activities, as well as a healthy eating demo put on by the culinary students at the tech school. So it, there's so many neat things that are going on if people take the chance to see what, what they are. Mm -hmm. We also, uh, two years ago, implemented uh, what we call the Promising Practice Award where uh, the schools get to submit a application um, about some fitness activity that they've been doing at their school that they think would be um, a great idea for other schools to copy. And the first year, Shannock Elementary won the award for their uh, walking club. And now every other, I think just about every elementary school now has a walking club. And then last year, the school that won the Promising Practice Award was uh, Dayton Elementary for their uh, running uh, cl um, club. They, um, their principal, Mrs. Berry, um, works out with the kids after school, runs with the kids, and then they enter 5Ks uh, in the community. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I, if, I mean, if you were in uh, elementary school and your principal went out and ran, wouldn't you think that was the coolest thing going? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit. In elementary school. <laughs> okay, there was an annual event held in September by Healthy Armstrong. Could we talk a little bit about this? Yes, so that was the Healthy Lifestyle Extravaganza oh, so that I just sort of mentioned. Talked about that. Yes, and it just happened. Maybe a little more in depth detail yeah, on it? Absolutely. It just happened last Saturday. Last Saturday? Two Saturdays ago. September 10th. It was last Saturday. Okay. And uh, they were able to engage in different activities. We had a warm-up put on by Leslie Sansone's exercise team. She mm -hmm. does walk tapes and uh, is pretty popular. She's from Newcastle and there was a group that came to do the warm-up activity with the families. And we walked a mile inside the gym to warm everybody up. Then the YMCA provided different activities for the 
students to engage in. We had uh, things like Latin jam, Pilates, yoga, step aerobics, um, body combat. We had a jump rope station, hula hooping, basketball. We had a lot of options for the kids to engage in and they got to earn tickets to a healthier lifestyle. So every activity that they joined in for seven minutes of activity, they earned a ticket for a healthier lifestyle to win different prizes. And our big prize was an iPod Touch that could have been awarded to somebody that did a lot of activities. And following that, we had a healthy cooking demo in the cafeteria put on by the culinary students. And they cooked us up four fabulous items that were healthy food, showed us how to make them healthy. Um, everybody went through a line and got to taste test everything and eat it. It was, it was a lot of fun. The, the big hit this year, food-wise, was the, um, Hawaiian, the chicken. Hawaiian chicken. Superb. Mm -hmm. It's very good. <laughs> it does sound good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, you know, uh, cut up pieces of chicken on a skewer and then um, mm -hmm. pineapple on the other. And they had, the chicken oh. had been marinated um, in like teriyaki. Yeah, teriyaki. It was, it was delicious. Certainly sounds tempting. Mm -hmm. We will have that recipe on our website, which is www.healthyarmstrong.com. Well, I'm going to have to look up that, but I think we'll move on to the next question okay. now. <laughs> In addition, a few years ago, Armstrong School District was one of just three districts <clears throat> that received a unique, uh, unique grant to implement some innovative ideas into our classrooms. Could you explain a bit more about this and how it's grown and changed and helped <laughs> the district? I'll start with that one. Um, we applied for a U.S. Department of Education grant there were 400 and some applications across the country. Only 77 sites were chosen and only three in Pennsylvania. And Healthy Armstrong in conjunction with Armstrong School District was one of the awardees. So we received um, a three-year award for almost $1 million and our focus is on uh, secondary um, at, um, PE, um, phys ed. And um, our, our main goal is to kind of transform and change the face of phys ed in Armstrong School District to make it a more fitness oriented and to make it an enjoyable activity for people and to introduce them to things that they might be more likely to do for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. Devin can tell you some of the things that we've done. Yeah, some of the things we have already implemented are pedometers that the students are able to wear. They can use them in their physical education classes and they also use them for some data collection that we are required to do for the grant purposes. We have received heart rate monitors and the students in the physical education classes will be wearing these so that they are able to um, kind of demonstrate that they're actually putting out activity and exerting energy during the physical education class. And we also have um, yoga packs that the students got last year. Not sure if you've gotten a chance to use those yet, but they, um, well, I'm sure, are tons of fun. And we have, um, coming soon, at the end of the month here, we're getting mountain bikes, which I think are going to be really, really neat. Something new to the physical education curriculum that students may not all, all have the opportunity to do. And I think it's gonna be especially neat for the schools that have the trail to just hop on on the mountain bikes and, mm -hmm. and engage in those. So something fun, it's gonna bring a lot of different and new things. We've been working with the YMCA and the YMCA actually offers the students, any student seven through 12, to take classes there for free. They just go and sign in. They're able to use the weight room and the fitness center for free after school for an hour and a half. And uh, it's such a great opportunity. I, I hope that more students will take advantage of the free activity opportunities. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Katanning is getting the mountain bikes oh, right at the end of the month. And we do have a trail right next to the school, mm -hmm. so that should be fun. Mm -hmm. It'll be neat. Something new, mm -hmm. something different. Yeah. And um, uh, the teachers are going to try to promote choices and have different choices of things. So if you choose to ride the mountain bikes, you could ride those. Or maybe there's some other choice that you could have going on in the gym at the same time. Tennis, so, yeah. basketball, softball. Mm -hmm extreme dodgeball <laughs> all kinds of fun <laughs> yeah. stuff stuff to get your heart pumping and get you ready mm -hmm. for fitness yeah the other neat thing is um, each of the students um, in the secondary schools will be wearing a heart monitor as part of their phys ed um, class mm -hmm. and so each student then will set their own individualized goals 
So for, and the idea is to um, you know have goals like your goals might be different than like Devin's goals mm -hmm. or my goals. So you're not competing against the other students. You're working you know with where you are and yeah. trying to improve you know your uh, health and wellness. It's like you're working for yourself, not against the other right. students. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we're trying to make it so it's enjoyable, not just for the people who are already athletically inclined, mm -hmm. but enjoyable for everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the goals for the grant? Can you name a couple that have been accomplished and some that are still in progress? Well, the, there are a lot of goals. Um, one is one overall goal is to increase the physical activity mm -hmm. of the students. So we have we had to do a baseline, and then four times a year we we um, have the students wear pedometers, and we're so we're keeping track of those minutes. The heart rate monitors, you know, will help us track that also once we get those up and running. Where um, the uh, students also have to do a a uh, survey called a uh, three-day physical activity recall survey. Ha ha have you been part of that? I don't think no, so, but okay. I know some people that were. Okay, so you, you basically have to track wh what you've been, uh, what you've done for the past three days in terms of different levels of physical activity. And then they also do a survey on uh, their fruit and vegetable consumptions because our goal is to try to increase, you know, the number of uh, servings of fruits and vegetables. So, so we're making progress in all of those areas. That's always good to hear. I think we have uh, one more question before the break, so just bear with us. How important is it to have support from legislative, corporate, and community leaders? And who are some others who have helped Healthy Armstrong to become what it is today? Well, I think it's really what we're trying to do is to change the culture of the community so that wellness is part of everybody's daily living. Mm -hmm. And so having the support of the various elements in the community is, is absolutely essential. So having the, uh, the, those partners that we have um, is uh, very important in helping, helping us move forward. They provide a lot of uh, in-kind donations to uh, help us uh, make our budget. Um, and um, uh, the county has uh, helped with some things. They've given us some money, some grant money. Um, there's some organizations that help fund our website. So, I mean, we, the, the more support, the better. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay, thanks very much. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back with Armstrong School District's education today. We'll talk more about Healthy Armstrong when we get back. Stick around. Before I came to IUP, I had no idea what college would be like or what role I would play or where I'd be in the future. But when I came to IUP, everything changed. I met people who really made me feel like I belonged. I had great classes at a great nationally ranked university. Hi, my name is Megan Miller. I'm a fine arts major, and this is my university. We're back with Armstrong School District's education today. We're talking about Healthy Armstrong with Devin Lorgan and K.O. and who you will remember if you were still here from the break. All right, next question. I understand there are a variety of different ways that you can be contacted to find out everything that you need to know. What are all the ways that you can be contacted? Well, Cer go ahead. Okay. Certainly our website, uh, www.healthyarmstrong.com, mm -hmm. has multiple things on there, including all of the events that are happening locally um, in the community, as well as healthy recipes and um, data, all, all sorts of things, articles. There's great information on our website. It's probably one of the most popular th ways to find out about us. But I do believe that we're also on Facebook and Twitter. But I'll let Kay talk a little bit more about that. She's not all up on it. I'm not all up on it. But we do have those accounts. Right. If you go on our uh, website, the, you, there's information about the uh, Facebook and Twitter right on mm -hmm. our home page. But there is a calendar of events um, in, uh, on the website. 
so that different organizations who are hosting events related to wellness can submit information and as long as it's appropriate then we add it to our calendar. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the features that we added this year was information from additional schools in the county um, so that Healthy Armstrong has actually branched out and gone beyond just Armstrong School mm -hmm. District although Armstrong School District is still you know the mainstay you know of the of the focus. That's pretty cool to hear, and it's probably a good idea to be on social media sites like that, so people would be more able to like get the information for it. Mm -hmm. Well, we want you to be a fan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're trying. Right, to I think I'm gonna go home and. <laughs> I think you should do that. Friended. You could catch a tweet or something. <laughs> I'm not on Twitter. Oh. Well, you can do Facebook. Personally, then. I think Twitter's voodoo, oh. or something like that. I don't really understand it. <laughs> Well, the other ways to contact us is, uh, you know, by telephone. Our phone number is uh, 543-8580, mm -hmm. and um, um, so those are the two main ways. I a pen, I wrote that down. Okay. <laughs> I'll <laughs> give it to you later. We should move on to the next question. <laughs> For a truly healthy community, behavioral, behavioral and lifestyle changes are required. What are some of the challenges that people come up against when they're trying to make lifestyle changes for the better? I think one of the biggest challenges is busy. Everybody's busy. Families are busy. Mm -hmm. We're running the kids' places. Sometimes there's not enough time to cook a healthy meal because it takes a lot longer. Sometimes it's too expensive, and I think money is sometimes a challenge when it comes to healthy eating. Uh, what, what we try to do is try to give you ways that you could eat maybe under a budget. We do that in some of our after-school programming, and we also try to provide as many opportunities to fit in um, activity as we can. Easy ways like taking just taking a little walk with your family after dinner. It's, it's real important that sitting down as a family and eating is important as well as fitting in a little bit of spending together time. Mm -hmm. And it's always easy to spend time together while you're exercising, walking, talking about the day. And um, you just kind of have to try and squeeze it in, although busy lifestyles are a challenge. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing too is people get in a rut. You know, and it's, uh, if you're not used to exercising, it's hard to take, the, the first step is the hardest step, just, yeah. just getting started. Um, so that's another challenge. Um, and uh, sometimes people are not aware also of what all is available, you know, in the community to, to take advantage of. So that's another reason why our website is important because it tells people, you know, w where are great places to go. For example, the Environmental Learning Center out of Crooked Creek has just built some new trails, um, and probably a lot of people don't know that. So that would be a, you know, a resource that people could mm -hmm. take advantage of. What health problems do we see with regards to childhood obesi obesity? Well, I had mentioned some of them earlier. You know, the increase in diabetes. Mm -hmm. Another one is um, a local uh, medical uh, supply store told me that now they're making the uh, sleep apnea machines for children mm -hmm. because that problem is becoming so widespread. Um, the uh, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, um, and so there are a number of those issues that at one time were just not seen, you know, in children. So, and we know that, you know, the heavier children are, um, you know, that it will be, the, the more health problems that they're likely to have as they get older. And it's predicted that this generation of children will be the first generation that doesn't live as long as their parents because of the obesity and the people being overweight. And that's a scary thought. Yeah. That's a scary thought. Now, with all of the dangers that we know about childhood obesity, why is it still such a persistent problem? Well, I think out of all the things that um, parents and families have to cope with, while they think it's, imp it's, it's, they can talk about it and they can express concern, but in the day-to-day -day life, it's not a priority. Um, things like making sure that they have a job, making sure they have food, make, you know, making sure, you know, there's just a lot of other more pressing issues. Pe I think people tend to think, oh, we'll worry about that later. Um, nothing bad is happening right now, so we'll worry about that later. Um, so that's, we have to get the issue out mm -hmm. there and right to the forefront. 
what are some solutions for families who want to be more physically active but find it really difficult to do so? Well, I think one of the things that uh, um, families in Armstrong School District can do is to participate in the after school uh, wellness programs. They're free of charge, you know, to the families. Um, and, um, there, and there are also programs for the secondary students, you know, at the YMCA that are also free being paid for by the grant. Um, so those are some things. Take advantage of uh, the trails that we have. I've gone all over Pennsylvania and, and we have some of the most gorgeous trails in the entire state. Um, so people should be taking advantage of those as well. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you're both very passionate av advocates for wellness. What sort of lessons about physical activity do you share with your students? Um, I just, I try to share with kids that it's very important, the importance of physical activity, why it's important, and just to make sure that they know that it's a lifestyle change and it's something for life. They, they want to, they need to maintain a healthy lifestyle from beginning to end. And that's why we want to start so young. I have. In my family program after school, we have um, preschool kids. I have babies that the parents are bringing and they're walking with strollers. And we, we do all kinds of fun things and it's just to make them aware that everybody can do it. It's not just when you reach a certain age. You need to start young so that they just, it becomes part of their lifestyle. It's a change. And I think, I think one of the things that Devin does is, is makes all of these activities fun. She truly enjoys it and her, her, her own family participates, you know, in these activities and, uh, and so it's, uh, she's a great role model. I think it's something, you know, that people sometimes view exercise as torture, like it's one of the most awful things to do. And I think if they're doing the right thing, you just have to find the right thing, the thing that mm -hmm. you enjoy doing. Find a buddy. I always tell people to buddy up because when you find a buddy to do it with, sometimes it's more fun because you can talk and socialize while you do it. Okay. Uh, what's your opinion on the use of technology such as the Wii, which we've talked about, and the Connect system as a way to exercise? Is it a good alternative or just a game? I think it's a good alternative. I think it's great because the kids are using those things. So if they're going to use them anyway, I think that it's best that we can put in activity and move, th promote the activity within what mm -hmm. they're doing. Well, and even the use of the uh, heart rate monitors, you know, that's technology. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're incorporating that into the PE classes. Um, so uh, we're not opposed to technology. We just want to blend it, you know, with wellness instead of using it as something that keeps people from moving and getting healthy, that it's part of you know, a, a change of lifestyle. Okay, uh, do either of you have anything to add for the benefit of the viewers? Well, Just take advantage of the things that are going on in the community. There's so many great things, so many great places that you can go to get active and, and find something that you enjoy. Do it together as a family or find just something that you can enjoy to do as ex exercise. Visit our website, www.healthyarmstrong.com and become one of our fans on Facebook. Okay, I know I will. <laughs> well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank our guests, Kay Owen and Devin Lorgan, for taking time out of their busy schedules to promote this important message. Our thanks go out to the TV production students at Catanning High School, led by their teacher, Mr. Don Swanson. They were our film crew today. Please join us again next week for another look at the Armstrong School District. Visit our website for updated information about the district, and have a great week.